You need to be focused, deadly focused. What is up? Welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast presented by Hippo Direct. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur or innovator every single week who's unleashing creativity to grow bigger and better businesses. I'm your host, Max Branstetter, digital marketing dude here at Hippo Direct. You can connect with us on social media at Hippo Direct or me personally at Max Branstetter. This is episode 19 and boy am I fired up and I think you'll be fired up as well. We're doing something a little bit different this episode. Instead of our typical longer format, we have 15 questions in 15 minutes, an ultimate rapid fire round for the ages with the ultimate entrepreneur on fire, John Lee Dumas, also known as JLD. JLD is one of the gods in the podcasting world. He's the host of the Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast, and as part of that, he's interviewed over 2,000 entrepreneurs over the past six years. He came from the U.S. Army as an officer for eight years, transitioned into some different corporate jobs, including a job in real estate out in San Diego, and realized that he needed something to kill the time while he was sitting in his car commuting from place to place. That's when he discovered podcasts, but he quickly ran out of them and realized there was a gap there for someone to produce a podcast daily and feature an entrepreneur daily. That's where Entrepreneurs on Fire was born Flash forward, any big name that you can think of has been on his show. He's consistently top ranked among any entrepreneur or business podcast. Stay tuned after the 15 questions for some exciting news regarding our company that may just benefit you. That's enough for now. Buckle your seatbelt and make sure it clicks. Enjoy the show. All righty, we are here with the notorious JLD, the man behind Entrepreneurs on Fire, John Lee Dumas. John, I just have one question for you before we get started. Are you prepared to ignite? No, no, notorious. Let's burn this place to the ground, brother. (laughs) All right, let's do it. Rapid fire for Entrepreneurs on Fire. (laughs) 15 questions in 15 minutes. Here we go. Number one, how can podcasting be an effective business building tool? It's all about relationships. If you are building powerful relationships with other people who you connect with, who are doing good things in this world, then you're going to win in the long term. And there's no better way to build a powerful relationship than to have a real conversation with somebody, to connect one-on-one, to have that chat. And podcasting allows you a medium to do just that. I mean, I've had over 2,000 one-on-one conversations with really cool people. Those relationships mean a lot. Wow. And our relationship has really blossomed over that first question there. I think we're done. (laughs) All right. Question number two. What is the biggest piece of advice that you have for any podcaster or aspiring podcaster out there? You need to be focused, deadly focused on solving one big problem for one set of people. So if you can just figure out one big problem that people have and create the solution of to that problem and have your podcast provide that solution, be the medium to deliver that solution, your podcast is going to win. And if your podcast isn't winning, it's because you're not providing a solution to a big enough problem. Oh my God, you're on fire. Can you believe this? (laughs) All right, number three, you got a little prediction challenge for you. When you think of the future of podcasting, what do you think that's going to look like? Do you have any predictions on that? Super niche. So the future of podcasting is going to be people saying, you know what? I'm not going to launch a health podcast. I am going to launch a podcast that's going to serve women over 55 years old who are interested in trying keto. Like that podcast is going to win where that health broad podcast is going to lose. So that's the future of podcasting. You've got to find, again, it's going even back to the previous question. You got to find that one specific niche problem and create the solution for it because a solution to the, that woman over 55 who wants to um, learn more about keto is not a vague, broad health podcast. That's not going to serve her needs, but the opposite is true. So the people that create that show that's serving that specific audience is going to win. 
Absolutely. And ironically, I think that's an answer that anybody in general will agree with. <laughs> Question. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit to more specifically on your business and your podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. Question number four, why do you stay so transparent with your business? And for anybody that isn't familiar with you yet, unbelievably, uh, you literally post your monthly income on your site, which is just amazing and shows kind of your challenges and successes. Why are you so transparent with your business? Yeah, we've been doing that for 62 months now. So, you know, oh we haven't God. just been doing it for a little while. It's been a long time. We've been publishing our monthly income reports because I'm going to be honest with you, entrepreneurship can be scary. And rightfully so, a lot of people should be wary about a lot of things they see online and that fake news. And it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's around. And so back in 2011, 2012, when I was gearing up to, to start my entrepreneurial venture, I was kind of nervous looking around and saying like, can you actually make money being a good person, providing a good service and good value? And luckily I was able to stumble across Pat Flynn who was sharing his monthly income reports. And I could see that there's a good guy being transparent, honest and genuine sharing income reports. I can see that he's making money, not a slimy or scumball way, but by doing it the right way, that's inspiring. If I ever get to a point where I'm making money in my business, I want to do the same. And that was my um, impetus to launch the monthly income reports 62 months ago. Oh my God. Well, congrats on 62 months. And I had a feeling it was Pat Flynn, but wasn't sure. I know he's <laughs> got that there. Although he stopped and I, I've kept yeah, on going. Not to break. A little uh, shots fired there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out Pat. And that takes you, you know, a nice segue to your first episode of all time in You've done episodes every single day, and I know you transitioned a little bit this year, but for the most part, you've done episodes daily for, what, six years now? Yeah, 2,000 episodes. Oh, absolutely unbelievable. For, for anybody out there, whether it's podcasting or any other habit or profession, how do you stay motivated doing something every single day for so damn long? <laughs> well, number one, I chose a passion that I had. You know, I enjoy, I love, I, I get a big kick out of talking to cool people and learning from them and asking them questions. I'm just a curious person who likes having conversations. And so that really leads to my strength of being a podcast host. Not to say I was a good podcast host from day one because I wasn't, but uh. I was able to, <laughs> to enjoy what I was doing. And that really led me to be able to build off of that and continue to wake up every morning and say, okay, I'm looking forward to chatting with X, Y, or Z today. And so for 2000 days, for five and a half years, I launched a podcast episode every single day. And uh, it was because, again, I chose something I enjoy doing. Yeah, I think you were pretty good at the start, but that, that's just me. I did. Oh, note, I, have, I have noticed over time, it's been interesting to see kind of how you've evolved at the host. At, totally. At the, if you're not evolving when you're doing something every day, there's something wrong. Yeah, at the start, you kind of had your questions planned out and um, didn't interact too much. And now towards the end, it's more of a, you kind of drop your value bombs all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now I can literally have a horrible guest. And of course, from time to time, you I don't know, maybe the word horrible is a little strong, but <laughs> a not awesome guest. And I can honestly now um, make that a great interview just by kind of taking over and, and making sure that, you know, it's going to be valuable for my listeners where if that had happened, you know, the first couple hundred episodes, it just would have been a terrible episode period. Right. Boom. Speaking of guests, Question number six here, how do you get in contact with big name? And for anybody that isn't as established yet, you know, what advice do you have for anybody reaching out to someone they aspire to connect with? You've got to be strategic. You've got to wait until um, people are in promotion mode. So a great example is when I launched, you know, I went after Tim Ferriss, Seth Godin, and people like that mm -hmm. when they had just launched a book, when they were doing a big promo for a product or a service or a community or something along those lines. And you've got to feed into that and say, hey, listen, I just realized like Seth, when you and I are talking, he just launched a book, This Is Marketing. Um, this is a great opportunity for anybody that wants to get Seth on their show to email him, seth at sethgodin.com, and say, hey, Seth, I'd love to have you come on my show for 10, 15 minutes. It won't take much of your time. And just talk about some of the cool things about This Is Marketing so I can get my audience to know a little bit more about it. And they can then go and, and consume the book in, in its entirety. And that's a great way to do it. So you've got to be strategic. And when you make the pitch, you know, you just got to get out there and you've got to make it an obvious value proposition. That's the key. Right. And for, in this case, we obviously paid you billions of dollars to come on here. So it was $2 billion. <laughs> so for that reason, we are not going to post our monthly income report. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. 1.9999 million. 
$10. Exactly. How about your mentors? Question seven here. I, you, I think the first mentor you hired was Jamie Masters. And then after that, Lewis House. Some, some huge names here. How did you make the decision to hire mentors like that in the podcasting space before you may have even ha- necessarily had the means to do so financially? So coming from military background, you know, I was an officer in the U.S. Army for eight years. I realized that the only reason I was able to succeed as an officer was because there were those who had come before me or who are currently where I wanted to get to um, skill-wise, knowledge-wise, experience-wise um, that I had to rely on. So mentorship started for me as a second lieutenant and all the way up through you know, when I attained um, my captainship um, in the last couple of years of my military career. And so that was, um, to me, a big eye-opener at that point. So then when I started in entrepreneurship, I said, hey, who is where I want to be right now? Oh, Jamie Masters, she's running a successful business podcast. I want to run a successful business podcast. Let me hire her. Who is where I want to be right now? This was like a year later. Well, Lewis is running a successful business. He's selling products on live webinars. I want to do that. How do I mentor and hire him? And so you have to reach out. And just like how I was talking about pitching people for the podcast, you got to pitch yourself um, for the mentorship. I wanted to let them know how I was going to be able to be of value to them too. And you know, obviously I had to invest money. So that was one way I was giving value to them was dollars into their pockets, which is important, but there were other ways as well. So the key thing for mentorship, find somebody right now who is where you want to be and go after that person. That's the mentor. Bam. And I'm going to plug the notorious JLD. <laughs> Question number eight. I know you've had Gary V on your podcast. I'm a huge Gary V fan as well. You were featured in his latest bestseller, Crushing It. I uh, Previously on my podcast, I had Dr. Durgham, another guest oh, cool. in his book. How has your life changed since being featured in Crushing It? Because you've obviously been well-established before that, but I'm curious the impact of you. I'm already a big name. Yeah, I can't use the word changed um, because that just isn't the reality. But being featured mm-hmm. in a book like Crushing It um, was definitely a benefit for a lot of reasons. You know, number one, being associated with Gary Vaynerchuk is always great because, you know, he's rightfully so very well respected in the world. He is somebody who I look up to and who I admire for a lot of different areas and a lot of different things. And so, you know, for him to kind of quote unquote validate what he sees that I've been doing over the past six years was really super cool. So I was really honored when he reached out to say basically, hey, you know, I'm going to be featuring like 10, you know, to 15 entrepreneurs and I want to feature you um, because I see you as a person who's done the, the best good in their brand through podcasting, you know, over this genre. It was, it was a huge honor. It was exactly something that I would have dreamed of back in 2012 when I launched the podcast. You know, but again, the reality is like you mentioned, like I was already very established an influencer and authority figure when the book came out. So I think it just kind of like kind of padded to those stats, so to speak. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, random example, like when, you know, you pass Roger Maris home runs and you get like 715 home runs, of course you want to hit more home runs. Your name's still going to be in the record books either way, but just keep padding those stats, so to speak. So like that was kind of a way it did that. I mean, it definitely put me um, in front of people that otherwise would not have heard of me or at least heard of me as quickly. So, you know, I can say like, you know, some of those vanity metrics, like more Instagram followers, more Facebook, Mm -hmm. you know, more listeners on podcasts. Um, But it wasn't this like seismic shift of like, you know, I was here one day and there the other. It was just a good, (laughs) cool validation of what I was doing and definitely some um, added audience benefits. This continued to progress over the months after the book launched. Wow, that's amazing, or, or magnificent, as you would say. <laughs> How about, this might have to be a one-word answer for the sake of time. How many different revenue streams do you have at this point? So we have over nine revenue streams. And yeah, just for time purposes, I guess I'll say that eofire.com slash income is a great way you can check out all of our income reports, see all of our revenue streams. But really importantly, also see where you know our streams of revenue that go out the door, meaning what do we invest in as a business to help our business grow because you know, we're very cognizant that it's all about the net profit. So I'd much rather make 200 in net 170 than make 500 in net 100. And that's where our business focus is. Awesome. Shout out EO Fire. Question number 10, how have virtual assistants helped you? I know you have a great staff all around the world. Virtual assistants just allow me to be more consistent and do things that I want to do, you know, even when I'm not doing those things, you know, like keeping up on social media, being sure that uh, my inbox is being handled correctly, doing all those different things. So 
for you as an entrepreneur, you can only do so much. And, you know, to avoid burnout, you've got to bring people on your team that are going to be doing things and taking things off your plate that you don't want to be doing. So that's what virtual assistants can do. All right. So kind of last five questions here, a little bit of different kind of more in general business boom, boom. Life, life advice. Boom, 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 boom. Question number 11. What is the biggest thing you do to stay creative? I have a morning routine. My morning routine is critical because it allows me to do all the things that I need to do. Number one, sleep well. Number two, wake up and hydrate. Number three, get a workout in. Number four, uh, meditate. Number five, journal. Like Those are the things that I'm able to do to keep my mind clear and to keep myself from getting burned out, to keep my body operating at an optimal level. Right. And I'm assuming you wake up at 1 a.m. ready to go. <laughs> I'm a minimum eight hours a night sleeping. In fact, the night before oh, last, beautiful. nine hours and 22 minutes. And I loved it. Oh, my God. Maybe tonight you'll get nine hours, 23. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Question 12 up to a dozen here. Who's your biggest inspiration in the business world? I would say Tony Robbins, and it's kind of a cop-out answer in some ways because he's such a big name and everybody like loves him. But at the same time, just that he's been able to do it for so long. There's a lot to admire there, and uh, I definitely admire that. Well, I, I, there's a reason he uh, comes up so often. So it's Yeah, it's true. Totally agree with that. Number 13, the uh, in this case, Lucky 13. You just came back from an amazing Euro trip. I think you said it was uh, seven, at least 17 countries in 63 days across Europe. What advice do you have for anybody traveling the world and who wants to get themselves to a, a lifestyle where they can still you know, gain income and still work while traveling the world? Well, it goes back to building that team. So I mean, number one, you've got to have that team. So our team was operating on all cylinders while we were gone. Um, number two, you just got to have systems and automation. That's key as well. And we did a lot of batching and prepping for that trip. So that trip didn't just come like on a whim, like we were planning for it for a while. And then number three, you know, we stayed in touch. We kept our finger on the pulse. I mean, we were working for 75 to 90 minutes a day. So not a lot, but enough. You know, we were definitely putting in the hours. So those are some things that will really help. Okay. Well, we're going to have to change it from a positive to a negative fear that maybe turned into a positive. What is your biggest failure? It was my failure to launch. Um, I was supposed to launch my podcast in August of 2012. And I just had fear. I had doubts. I had the imposter syndrome. And so I kept delaying it for no good reason. But luckily, you know, the aforementioned Jamie Masters forced me to launch, thankfully. And it's all been great since. But, you know, we just all hit those walls of those fear and doubts. And uh, it got me for sure. And it delayed my launch for a month. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I'm glad you've smooth things out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. All right. Question number 15. This is by far the most important and hopefully it's not too stressful of a question for you. What is your biggest pet peeve? I hate when people write to me, you're like you are, but it's Y-O-U-R. I hate that. Oh, without the apostrophe, you mean? Like you are going to love this, but Y-O-U-R. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, that's a bit. I, that's got to be like one of the most common typos of all it's time. It's so too. common. Everybody does it, and I hate yeah. it. I don't know why I hate it so much, but it's pet so noticeable. Well, your Y O U R on a roll, JLD. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was 15 questions in 15 <laughs> minutes. I can't believe we did it. I'm going to take a sip of water. JLD, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy day. This has really been a dream come true as a podcaster to have you on our podcast, and I can't wait to share you out with all of our, uh, we'll call it the Wild Business Growth Nation. <laughs> so Love it. thank you so much. Where is the best place for people to connect with you? And uh, if there's anything you want to highlight right now, uh, a shameless plug here. All the magic happens at eofire.com. It was a blast chatting with you today, Max, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Wow, we okay. That was quite the 15 minutes there. Thank you so much, JLD. Fire Nation, and of course, Wild Business Growth Nation. We love you guys and appreciate all your support. Now, for that special announcement I mentioned back at the start, I am very excited to announce Hippo Direct is rolling out a podcast service. So what does that mean for you? That means if any of you out there are interested in starting a podcast of your own, and have some questions about any part of the process, whether that be planning, production, promotion, or whether you have an existing podcast and you'd like some outside help, we are here for you and we are committed to making your podcast the best it can be. 
reach out to me at max at hippodirect.com for any podcast help or any questions. We'll start off everything with a free 30-minute consultation. And right away, we'll start off by sharing some very, very helpful resources that have been instrumental on getting this podcast up and going and connecting with high-quality guests. That's max at hippodirect.com. And of course, you can always reach out to us for any of your mailing list, email list, or digital marketing needs. Until next time, let your business run wild. Bring on the bongos!